Good morning. I thought I'd talk uh, for a few minutes today about how Abba's Way came into being. Abba's Way is a, a book uh, and um, it was published uh, around two, uh, 2006, uh, written uh, in the first, uh, uh, the middle years of the first decade of this century. Abba's Way actually came into being because um, as I evolved mentally <laughs> in a funny way, I feel as though, though I've had more education in the last, uh, oh, I don't know, um, 10 years or 12 years uh, as I've had all my life. Uh, and um, well, I can get into to my weird thoughts about, <laughs> about my my second theory in college educations, <laughs> it's crazy. I, I was a d disgustingly bad student when I was uh, a child, and, and then for some reason, I, when, when it got to be just words, and I could do, <laughs> do nothing but words, uh, that was in college. I, I made uh, Phi Beta Kappa at the end of my seat, junior year, I guess. Uh, and... <laughs> um, it was crazy because I didn't have any sense that I was any uh, more or less uh, on to anything. Uh, and and I, I don't think I, I ever really got educated until, until um, recently. And, 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 and all you do is when you get that way is you realize how infinitesimal your, your capacities are. Your, your knowledge is <laughs> how in, infinitesimal it is. Anyway, Abba's way, I, I had o already concluded that Abba was, was the proper address for, for uh, use uh, in uh, any, any effort to deal with the deity. And, and one of the reasons for that is this, that... that um, it's crazy to th you know to think that you you could converse with uh, you know a person with all of the attributes that you might give to a deity uh, you know and when I think about quote the deity you know I go down uh, into the middle of, of of everything the middle of matter you know I think you know I think the deity is somewhere <laughs> you know I, I wouldn't attempt to uh, try to describe uh, even what I intuit but I do take Jesus literally at the point where he he says if you want to know how to talk to um, the deity. Try this. Uh, try Abba. Uh, and of course, Abba is, is almost a, a uh, burlesque. I mean, in a certain way, it's a kind kind, kind of a. It's like it, it's. Well, I mean, Jesus was was basically, you know, sent to the cross for being a blasphemer. Hmm. He, he he blasphemed, uh, and and using the, the term Abba was, was part of it. Uh, he was basically saying, "Look, uh, human beings, y you folks, mm -hmm. uh, you can communicate with Abba and should communicate with Abba on a daily basis because you need forgiveness every day." And here's a little prayer that <laughs> will. Uh, has that in it. Um, that prayer is still said all, all, all the time, but I'm not, not positive that everybody practices daily forgiveness, uh, do you think? I don't know. Um, and I definitely think that, that most people these days are are gravitating away from, from a form of religion. Uh, I've known that for a long time, therefore I, I figured the only way I could uh, um, function would, would be to try to figure out a way outside uh, 
of of uh, formal church, and and that was sort of a matter of convenience because because <laughs> it didn't take too long in my career for me to uh, uh, move from a position of of, of some prominence within <laughs> within uh, the the church uh, to to uh, one of of um, exile. Anyway, Abba occurred to me, oh, I don't know, maybe 1980s, and, and I just sort of sat there, uh, and then as the 2000s developed, I began to read Nietzsche. And Nietzsche, of course, is, is a, a, a crazy kind of read, because here's this person who has these utterly, utterly brilliant uh, th essays and thoughts. And, and you should read, uh, you know, Walter Kaufman on, on Nietzsche is, is just a, a absolutely smart and admirable scholar translated him and, and otherwise uh, um, interpreted uh, Nietzsche, but but Nietzsche interprets himself, my lord. Uh, no, no, I do not read German, uh, but I do read <laughs> uh, Nietzsche and, and uh, appreciate him. I, I don't believe that you can fault somebody for reading translations and getting something out of them, right? Um, in any case, what I got out of Nietzsche was something that segued with something that I had determined from a very different um, set of data. That was my experience um, writing and singing the uh, Gospel of Mark, of all things. I won't explain that, maybe in another video. But, but Nietzsche to me, understood two things. One, that will is the engine of, of everything within a person. It's kind of a utility. It's like, like a motor, an engine. So he understood that. And, and since, since engines more or less create power, you know, he talked about will to power. So he understood that, but he understood something else. And by and large, people have not, not cottoned to this too much. And that is the primacy of values. And much of Nietzsche's criticism of, of everything comes down to the, to the fact that he saw the values operative in Western culture as having uh, elements in them that he perceived as being uh, untrue, phony, um, execrable, <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to say about them. So Nietzsche basically said, look, look, go be an artist, go be a creator, and go off and uh, into some kind of solitude, uh, get in touch with your will, and revalue these <laughs> values. That's it. I, I, that's, at least that was my reading of Nietzsche. And I'll come up with this. But I had already come up with, <laughs> with what I thought were the values that we needed uh, and the values that I think are the basis of, of, of what I now advance, at least hypothetically, as, as, as the heart of a kind of ethical ontology for that, that, that's universal because, you know, when you think about the values of non-idolatry, of tolerance, 
democracy and helpfulness, when you think about those values, what you are basically doing is accessing the summum bonum, the highest good, and what has animated every person who ever meant anything to the positive creation of history, for God's sakes. Really, think about it. The people who gave, you know, you know, you, you see these Sarah Palin figures, uh, you know, lauding the great founders of, of, of our society. Well, insofar as, as we had great founders of our society, they believed in some of these values. You know, the very values that, that, that uh, uh, <laughs> our, our political animals uh uh, don't seem to be willing to uh, operate uh, on the, in, in any case. I don't want to get off into that that <laughs> that realm. That's a, a large piece of of what I think. But but uh, okay. So Nietzsche. As I read Nietzsche, I read obviously. I, I looked at uh, all this speak Zarathustra, which he regarded as, as you know, the work, the masterwork. Most people uh, who criticize Nietzsche or scholars and such do not accord to Zarathustra the uh, homage that, that Nietzsche sought for it. But I saw it I love texts, and I, I love the idea of fooling with them, actually. And, um, yes, Nietzsche with, with Zarathustra, and I thought, well, what, what about, what about thus spake Jesus? So the first draft of Abba's Way was built around the structure of uh, the speak Zarathustra, Nietzsche's evocation of the the uh, person, the higher self, the, the person, the higher person, the, the, his, his uh, ideal human being. Well, there was another aspect of Nietzsche that, that um, some people, some scholars that I respect, um, have, have pointed out. Nietzsche, as you may know, wrote the Antichrist, uh, a very short book, and it was meant to be the first of four works on revaluing values. But there are some scholars who believe that Nietzsche actually ended his, his uh, intentionally ended his uh, work on this with the Antichrist, with that book. But within that book, I think we get to even a possible explanation of Nietzsche's ultimate madness because essentially what, what Nietzsche arrives at I think kicking and screaming inside of himself is, is sort of the fact that, that Jesus himself embodied values that were apposite. Now, he didn't embody the values that I have advanced of non-idolatry, of democracy, tolerance, and helpfulness. No, he didn't. Nietzsche did not attribute those to Jesus, as I do. But Nietzsche got to the point, I believe, 
as a son of he was a son of a Lutheran minister, which, who I think he actually admired uh, in some respects. He got to the point, I think, where it was impossible for him to go in the value direction that he was going. And it was impossible for him to go in the way that he perceived in Jesus. The thing became a absolute madness producing conundrum and I think he spent his last 10 years in shocked silence in the face of, of, of a way in which he could not proceed. I think it would have killed him outright to, to uh, proceed. But think about that broken egg <laughs> that, 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 that birth that <laughs> out on the street of Turin you know, but Nietzsche, Nietzsche went mad he went and uh, he was walking in the streets of Turin where he'd moved and he, 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 he saw this horse being beaten and went and, and hugged the, the horse <laughs> and went mad. Well, in any case, Abba's way was my effort to take the substance of Zarathustra and imagine Jesus speaking. And it, I got it done. I got a kind of draft done. And then I thought to myself, now wait a minute. I don't want to do Jesus as Zarathustra. I want to make believe, as, as any writer of fiction does, that, that Jesus is, is speaking in this. And then I was struck by these words of Jacques Derrida, which I I I believe, and and I it's it's in the you know, preface to to um, Abba's way. And I could I could grab it, but I won't. Uh, uh, I'm too. Uh, new at this video thing to, <laughs> to be able to to do too many uh, uh, special effects. Okay. What Derrida basically said was that if if uh, if we don't want to have a world of repetition of the 20th century, which he associated with Nietzsche. If we don't want to have uh, a, 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 a world of more world wars and, and more genocide, well, other people, Nozick, other people understood this too, of course. Everybody understands it universally, I think. If we don't want to do that, we have to come up with something unprecedented. That's what just said. And what would be unprecedented but not impossible would be some form of moral evolution within humankind. And it would not come from a social movement. The only thing it could come from would be if we, as human beings, have already within us 
the stuff, the stuff of alteration from cottoning to the idiocy of the past, the political idiocy, the, I mean, good grief, communist, democracy, both of them. in the past have given assent to the very premises of warfare and conflict and binary life. Well, I'm getting out into another area, but Abba's Way was written as a, a, an effort to access the elements of change that the world needs in order to avoid sure suicide. Now, I could argue, well, well, that's crazy because uh, if I believe what I believe, things are going to be fine anyway. Things are going to be fine. Just, just, just uh, hang in, hang loose. That's fine. And in a way, that's true. But in another way, it it isn't because unless people individually, democratically participate by having opinions that are accurate, <laughs> then the whole zeitgeist, the whole Weltanschauung, the whole feel of, of the world will, will not change. And we need that that feel to change. Well, I've talked too much, but Abba's Way came out of that, and these readings from Abba's Way uh, on this little YouTube site are, are um, cumulatively the sort of text um, that I've been operating from. Thank you.